as coronavirus vaccination programmes get underway around the world, there are concerns growing that the poorest nations may be missed out or left to the very end of a very long queue for the resources. Now, one of the arguments being put forward to back that claim is the amount of surplus vaccine being bought by wealthy countries. Some estimates suggest they have pre-ordered enough to vaccinate their entire populations three times over, making it, of course, that much harder for everyone else to access them. Well, Heidi Chow is with Global Justice Now, one of the organisations campaigning on the issue for a People's COVID Alliance. Heidi, thank you very much for joining us. Um, there are some arguments for having more uh, doses than you have people because we don't know necessarily the efficacy of all of these vaccinations and, and of course, the rate at which they'll come in. Is that a fair argument? Uh, good morning. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, so the People's Vaccine Alliance is a global alliance of campaigners and organisations, and we are saying that we're seeing this gaping inequality in access to vaccines. So, like you said, where, where we might have um, in high-income countries the ability to vaccinate our populations uh, three times over, there are many countries in the world, um, and especially the poorest countries in the world, which are left with virtually very little or none. But, um, I, but I suppose the point I'm making there is that we don't yet know about the efficacy of all of these different vaccines and we don't actually yet know about the delivery either so uh, isn't that one of the reasons why governments are over ordering the, the, the governments that are over-ordering are actually the high-income countries that are over-ordering. Actually, low- and middle-income countries have struggled to access any of the vaccine doses at all because most of it has been hoarded by high-income countries. And at a time of a global pandemic, instead of having um, most of the uh, uh, doses spoken for by high-income countries, we should be actually working together collaboratively to ensure that there is a fair allocation for all vulnerable uh, groups, uh, all at-risk groups in whichever country they live in. Um, this is not just a solidarity and fairness argument, it's also a public health argument because actually when you leave vulnerable groups um, uh, unvaccinated in, in whichever country they live in, um, we, we get to see the, the, the uh, continued disruption to public health systems right. so, um, and to economies. Yeah, of course. So should the criteria then be how badly affected any individual country is if it's going to be a level playing field? I think there are two issues here. The first is how do we allocate the um, initial supplies that we have in the world uh, today, um, and we need the, we need countries to work together to 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 agree on the priorities uh, for fair global allocation. But the more bigger issue and the more structural issue is how do we actually increase the level of, of vaccine supplies? Um, because we've seen this level of hoarding because we're faced with a scarcity problem. The world can't produce enough of um, uh, produce enough doses because the the companies that are developing these vaccines hold the patents, the intellectual property um, and the technological know-how. And so right. essentially these companies have a monopoly. And yeah. so we have a monopoly situation in, during a time of global crisis. Yeah, very briefly, <laughs> do, do you have much optimism that, that something better can be achieved? Because there's been plenty of talk about working for everyone together, very briefly. Yeah, no, yeah, there is a proposal at the World Trade Organization that's being discussed this week um, to actually suspend uh, patent rules during the pandemic for COVID-19 vaccines and treatments as a recognition that during this global crisis, every country should have a fair shot at accessing the vaccines and the treatments that they need to get out of this pandemic together. OK, Heidi Chow, thank you very much indeed.